The best way to protect us is to stop the epidemic in Africa, and we need those healthcare workers. So we do not want to put them in a position where it makes it very, very uncomfortable for them to even volunteer to go. Now, this looks like the real thing, but it's only a drill. Cities across the U.S. are holding training sessions like this one for first responders on how to treat Ebola patients. The D.C. Fire and EMS Department held a demonstration for its first responders today. Officials say it's all about taking quick action from the moment they receive the call. We have a plan in, in place right now. When you call 911, that's one of the questions that they ask if you present with the flu-like symptoms. Have you traveled in the last 21 days? Where have you been? So that starts the whole process right there. The key is communications. The training scenarios came as New Jersey, New York, and Illinois and Florida enforced tougher restrictions for people returning from the Ebola hot zone in West Africa. One local doctor who just came back from a trip to Sierra Leone is taking extra precautions about the Ebola virus. News 4's Emily Guggen has talked to him today and has the story. Emily? Lou, the quarantine comes after a New York City doctor found out as Ebola. He had spent the day before his diagnosis running around the city. Dr. Myron Glick, who just returned from South Africa last Thursday, and we spoke to him by phone today. For nearly two weeks, Dr. Myron Glick was in Sierra Leone, West Africa, on mission. And with more than 10,000 cases of Ebola virus killing more than 5,000 people in West Africa, he had reason to worry. It's a, a, a catastrophe in that country. Uh, so going over, I was definitely concerned about uh, Ebola. He went to Sierra Leone to help set up a health care center, which is an extension of his Buffalo Jericho Road Community Health Center. He says there's a great need there. For the whole district of 540,000 people, there's only three doctors. So the, the, the health need, um, you know, even before Ebola was, was tremendous. He doesn't believe he was exposed to Ebola because he didn't provide any medical care. But even though he wasn't exposed, now that he's home, he's taking his temperature two times a day to make sure he doesn't start showing symptoms. I have to contact the health department twice a day and let them know how I'm doing and what my temperature was. And I have to do that for 21 days. But I'm free to go around the community. He believes Governor Andrew Cuomo and New Jersey Governor Chris Christie are overreacting by putting a quarantine in place for all returning medical workers who were in contact with Ebola in West Africa. I think if the governors really looked at the science and at the facts, uh, they wouldn't have uh, taken this step. I, I think, I think it's, it's more out of fear. It's more the politics of it. Dr. Glick doesn't think people in the state should be worried about an epidemic because there's a health care infrastructure. He thinks our focus should be on those in West Africa. The cases are rising exponentially. Uh, if, if, if the world doesn't throw everything we have at this situation, you know, there could be tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of people die in the next month. And Dr. Glick has not had a fever. His screening will end on November 14th, and he reminds residents that someone isn't contagious unless they're showing symptoms, and it can only be spread through bodily fluids. It's not airborne.